Is he the Braves' bad boy or a talented but misunderstood young man who just wants to get the job done? You decide as we spend a little time with right fielder, heart stealer Dave Justice. Right now he's concentrating on getting back the big mo, momentum, that will boost his batting average, his confidence, and our approval of him. And believe you me, nobody has higher expectations of Justice than David himself. Slamming. Slamming. Things that make you go... Whether he's storming about, slamming them in, or throwing them out, Dave Justice means business for the Braves. Here comes Justice! Save! And Atlanta wins it! With that slide into home off a Mark Lemke hit, David Justice secured the first Atlanta Braves victory ever in a World Series. It was the beginning of the end of a dream season for a team of young heroes and a city on a natural buzz. Justice came and made his name the year before all Atlantans were fans. Named 1990 Rookie of the Year, he hit 50 home runs over his first two seasons, even though he sat out nearly a third of last season with a back injury. Coming out of this year's spring training with a 500 batting average and high hopes, he battled the sore back again and a bruised confidence, but not for long. Deep toy right field, wave goodbye. He's gotten... More confident every time he's had better swings. When you get a few hits, you don't know how much that changes your confidence. I mean, you start feeling like, yeah, okay, I'm ready to go. And now all of, sudden, all of a sudden, the ball starts looking like a beach ball. The streak home run hitter uses whatever it takes to set up the right conditions for a hit. Then the big decision comes, high tops or low tops. High tops tonight, because last night I didn't get a hit with the low tops on. It's open in that side. There's a fly ball, deep right field. Back goes O'Neal. He's at the wall. Braves lead. Right. You love it. I love hitting home runs. Yeah, I love it when, when as soon as I make contact, and you know you just went, went deep. You know, I know it. And can't wait to get to the dugout to start celebrating. That's why I run around the bases so fast. You got to mention things quick about him. He doesn't waste any time. You know, I run. I can't wait to get to my teammates so we can start, in, you know, celebrating. It's that camaraderie, that magic that happens between these young wonders who went from worst to first that many cite as the reason for that miracle season. They joke Dion, around with each other. Dion, make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. CIS, you know what? When they hit and see, they don't want to do nothing for you. But they are there for each other when some demanding fans are not. Uh, I can't remember what teammate said this to me one day. But he said this to a young lady. He said, how would you feel if every day you're at work, sitting at your desk, all right, and say you're typing something, and every time you made a mistake, someone just jumped over your shoulder and said, boo, you're terrible. You are the worst secretary ever. How could you make that mistake, okay? Say you heard that every time you made a mistake at work, then all of a sudden, time for you to get off work, you know, you go outside and somebody goes, hey, can I have an autograph? Hey, how about signing this for me? As you just heard all this negative stuff. How would you feel? How would you feel? The right fielder has shouldered his share of criticism this year. The boos led primarily by the press. And his bitterness about that sprinkles his conversation. Oh, yeah, Terry, by the way, would you like to have an argument right now since they say we always argue? According to uh, the Atlanta Constitution. The negative publicity started at spring training during contract negotiations. Management offered Justice $400,000, a $100,000 raise from the previous season. Justice wanted $600,000 and set out of the team picture because they had not come to an agreement. He eventually settled happily with five hundred fifty dollars making him one of baseball's best-paid two-year players. But it was so funny because it's not like I was the only one unsigned in spring training. We had Avery unsigned. Never heard anything in the paper about Avery. You know, you had everybody. Olsen was unsigned. You know, we had seven other guys. Yet every day it was me, right? I'm causing turmoil. You know, I'm the bad apple on the team. How? When every day I show up at the field and give 100%, you know, get along great with my teammates, I'm the bad apple. You tell me. But have you noticed how you've gone from being the darling of last year to, quote, the egotistical bad boy this year, and does it bother you? Well, it bothers me because what I can't understand is how can I be termed 
or considered an, an egotist when uh, you never hear me say anything about, you know, we've won because of me or I am the Atlanta Braves. You know, everything I preach is team because that's how I really feel. I feel like the only way we win out there on that field is because our team wins. You know, we do it all together. And it was amazing because I think what it is is I carry a confidence with me when I'm on the field. But I feel like that's the only way I can do well. Do you hate signing autographs? No, but you know what? That's another rap I get. And it's hilarious. The demand for me to sign is a lot greater than in a few other guys on the team. So if I go somewhere and there's 400 people want an autograph, but I can only sign 60, well, you got 60 people that are going to be happy, but they're not going to say anything. But then you got well, you have 340 people that are pissed off because I didn't sign, and they're going to make some noise about it. Now, I do know one thing you do that I learned from reading the paper, that you're into soaps. Mm-hmm. We well, you know how that happened. We were in Rookie Ball, 1985, and, uh, you know, it was four guys in a trailer home, and one of my roommates, he was the only one who used to watch soaps. So he turned it on, and everybody got to sitting around watching, and next thing you know, we were beating him to the TV set to turn it on. What do you like about the soaps? Oh, the storylines are so awesome. You know, only thing I hate, though, is like every Friday, you know, about 10 minutes before your show is about to go off, you know, they give you something good and you don't have Saturday and Sunday to watch it. So now you got to wait till Monday. That's the only thing I hate about the soaps. But the storylines are, are, are great. I mean, it's hilarious, it's funny. You know, I got a couple fine, you know, young ladies on my soap that I, that's, that I like to watch. The man with the half-million-dollar smile has his eye on giving acting a try himself someday. He's had headshots done, as any aspiring actor would, has done some commercials. Hey, guys, let's play ball. We can't. The twins aren't here yet. Twins? He was active in drama at the prep school he attended outside Cincinnati. But basketball was his passion. Justice was raised by his mother, Nettie. His parents divorced when he was very young. Your mother and my mother are very much alike in that they both raised their children by themselves through divorces. As an only child and also as a Catholic child, I think we sometimes carry what I call Catholic school, only child, single parent guilt, where we're constantly trying to be the best at everything we can be to prove to that missing father you shouldn't have left. Well, no, you know what? I was never like that. Um, with me, See, because I come from a big family, you know, not the immediate family, but, you know, my mom had, you know, 10, 11, 12 brothers and sisters. So, you know, I would never miss that, that male figure around. Your tattoo. Oh, you can't I, I see want, it right now. I can't see it right now, but tell me about the tattoo. It's a cloud, a crucifix, and your mom's name. <coughs> right, well, <clears throat> I was in Vegas last year, last off season, and, uh, I, this guy had some tattoos. I was like, man, I've always wanted to get a tattoo. We were trying to figure, well, what do I want to do? What kind of, what kind of, of, of tattoo do I want? So I was thinking, well, you know, I'm Catholic, you know, and, and I believe in Jesus Christ, and, and I always wear, I used to always wear a cross. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll just put a cross on my arm. That way I can't never take it off. And then I said, well, the closest person to me is my mom. So I put my mom on it, too. My mom's name is on my arm, right? And then, basically, the guy just did some, they made it like colorful, so he put a cloud around it, put some roses around it. What'd your mama say? Well, first she, she couldn't believe I got a tattoo. Then when I told her her name was on it, you know, she felt like crying. Let's talk about women. <laughs> 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 no, don't even try it. Okay. Yeah. What, what about him? <laughs> you were engaged. It was broken off. You're over it? Oh, yeah. Fine with it? I'm over it. I'm fine with it. You want you know, to get married? I, right now, I'm engaged to to, uh, to that that field out there, you know. And I, hopefully, I'll marry it by the end of the. It's all, anyway, what I'm trying to say is, I'm really going to try to throw myself more into my my sport. And um, wait, a minute. stop the bull. Okay. Man cannot live by baseball oh, alone. I got a couple friends now. Don't get me wrong. You know, y'all know who y'all are. I ain't gonna give y'all up though. But uh, <laughs> I got a couple friends, you know, that I see. On one of his weekly visits to Star 94 Radio, a fan called to say she sat next to one of his friends, actress Halle Berry of Jungle Fever fame, at a Braves game. This is a friend of mine. <laughs> Can I have friends? <laughs> no, no, she's, no. Seriously, though, she's, a, she's a, a very, very good friend of mine. Okay. Does she have to like baseball? Yeah, I think for sure. You have to be athletic athletically inclined I mean no doubt I mean how can I date or marry a woman who doesn't like baseball something that I do something that that's a very big part of my life what else does she need <clears throat> she needs to have her own life too of course she has to be intelligent 
I mean, that's what everybody wants. I mean, I, I'm giving you... Does she have to be good looking? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because that's the first thing that attracts you to a woman. I don't care what anybody says. I know I say on the radio personality because I was playing around, but you ask anybody out there, some guy had the best personality in the world now, but you won't know it if he looked like the back of your shoe, right? <laughs> you won't know it. You see? So, um, of course, you gotta, I, mean, I gotta think she looks good. <laughs> he already has kids, a team of them. This is two guys on my awesome basketball team. This past offseason, he coached a basketball team in Decatur of 13 and 14 year olds, and he was quite a hit. It's because when I show up, right, I told him, what kind of gym shoes you guys want to wear? You know, and they didn't want to, you know, they didn't know what to say. So my cousin, he plays on team two. He goes, let's get the Charles Barkley's. You know, that, that's like one of the highest priced shoes out there. They, those kids got me running all over Atlanta. You know, you should see me. I'm running, speeding all over Atlanta. So I show up. I don't know if they believe I was going to get them, but I show up, right, and I with the shoes, and I give them to them. They went out and played awesome that day. It was like, it was like they were Barkley. I mean, it was like they were, they were Charles Barkley themselves. They went out and played great. It was funny because then the next day I show up, and every kid in the gym now wants to play with me. <laughs> he says coaching is a possibility in his future, or sports casting, or acting. But for now, this is the show he performs in 162 times a year. The lights are just as bright as Broadway or Hollywood. The critics, just as biting. And the reviews come instantly. We told you about David's interest in acting and in the soaps. Well, on July 7th, he will appear in an episode of his favorite soap opera, The Young and the Restless. Set your recorders.